First things first, a legal uh, disclaimer. Uh, this video should not be used as a basis for making uh, investing decisions. Make sure that you study the companies on your own or contact uh, a professional when making investing decisions. Thank you. Aslam guys, Ifan back again with another video. And in this video, what we are going to be looking at a, is a concept of uh, ratio analysis that we use in finance uh, to evaluate performance of companies to evaluate how um, companies are doing, whether they're profitable or not, whether we should be investing our money in those uh, companies or not. And uh, we will be using Excel to, uh, you know, to, to do this uh, analysis. So let's get started. Now, one of the methods uh, to evaluate the performance of businesses and companies uh, in finance is called uh, ratio analysis, okay? So you'd use uh, different ratios to see how a particular company is uh, performing. Now, uh, the, there are four basic types of ratios that uh, you would tend to look at when you're doing uh, uh, the evaluation of a company's uh, or business's uh, performance. Now there's uh, the profitability ratios, the liquidity ratios, the efficiency ratios, and the investment ratios, okay? So you've got that up on the screen. Now, there are basically four types of uh, profitability ratios. There's return on capital employed, there's cross uh, profit ratio, there's the markup ratio, and then net profit ratio. Next, we have the liquidity ratios. We have the current ratio and the asset test ratio. Uh, the third type is the efficiency ratios. So you've got the turnover to fixed assets, expenses ratios, data stock turnover, debtors collection period and creditors payment period. And the last one is the investment ratios, the dividend yield, the dividend cover, earnings per share, earnings uh, price per earning ratio, and the capital gaming ratio, okay? So uh, let's get started. Uh, what we need to do is, first what we'll do is we'll create a a profit and loss uh, statement for two years and then uh, we'll also create a balance sheet for two years and uh, the, you know and we'll use the the, the profit and loss uh, statement the PNL and the balance sheet and we'll extract numbers from those two statements uh, to you know to do these uh, ratio analysis okay so let's first create a uh, PNL um, so like a, what we call a profit and loss. Okay. So, um, let's uh, assume that this is a company that's, uh, that's involved in trading. So it's gonna be buying stocks by buying uh, in inventory and selling inventory and uh, maybe doing some uh, processing on it and then you'll have the opening stock you have your budget you know the inventory you, you have purchased and then you have the closing stock so um, and obviously there'll be uh, cash involved sales and then uh, and, and profit that will go show up in the PL statement so let's uh, first uh, let's see you have sales in terms of cash and you have sales in terms of credit okay so let me just make this bold and let me just indent this a bit okay so for year one let's assume in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the format of the cells so they show up with the, the commas for thousand places okay so cash uh, for year one, let's assume was 80,000 and credit was 620,000. All right, now uh, that, those are the two sales that we had. The total uh, for these two would be uh, this 80 plus 620. 
Okay, so that gives us 700,000. Now, uh, the, the cost of doing business is the cost of sales, cost uh, S, cost of sales, which is basically uh, cost of doing business. Okay, uh, we have the opening stock, and then we have purchases. And I'm going to indent this a bit too and just make this bold. Okay. So uh, let's assume this is this is basically year one. Okay. So let's assume the opening stock was thirty thousand. We had stock worth thirty thousand and we had purchased stock or materials worth 520,000 okay so that gives us a total of let me just put a sum formula here 550,000 okay now uh, obviously there's going to be some uh, sales uh, that you know the, this is the opening stock and you bought this and then you, you know, sold some so let's assume that the closing stock is as closing stock. Let's assume was thirty-four thousand. Okay. So uh, if that is the uh, the closing stock, the, what is the value of the stock that you sold? Let's figure that out. In fact, uh, let me just put a long line here. Okay. So, uh, if that is the opening stock and we bought at the beginning of the year, 1st of Jan, uh, we had uh, material worth 30,000. And during the year, you bought uh, raw material worth 520,000. So basically, you had five hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of raw material you know to work with during the year. At the end of the year, if you had uh, raw material worth thirty-four thousand left, that means the sales that you have done would be the total stock minus whatever is left over, and that would be five hundred sixteen thousand dollars worth of uh, stock that you still have in hand. Okay. Now, uh, gross profit. Let's assume uh, we made a profit of gross profit of one hundred eighty-four thousand. Now, I'm just going to make this bold. And we, we had incurred expenses worth about 115,000. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and indent this a bit. Sorry. Okay. So, what is the net profit before, for tax before, uh, for interest? Okay. So net profit before interest. Now, what do you think? Uh, this is what the gross profit was. And then in order to make those sales, we had incurred a, a expense of 115,000. Okay. So we can say that the um, Net profit before interest uh, payments would be the gross profit minus the expense that we incurred, which gives you sixty-nine thousand. Okay. Now let's assume uh, the interest on.
other departures is $750. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and invent that. Okay, so that's obviously another uh, best a cost that, that a business has to incur. So this was before interest. This is the inter uh, this is the net profit before interest. Now this is the interest that we had to pay. So then we had the net profit before taxation. Okay. So net profit before taxation would be the difference of these two. Okay. So it will be 69,000 minus 750,000. That gives you 68,250. All right. Now let's assume that the corporate tax is, uh, let me just first put in the corporate tax. Uh, let's assume is 17,060. Um, Okay, so now the net profit, uh, net profit after tax, this would be, uh, this was before tax, 60,250, you had to pay tax of 17,060, so now the um, net profit after tax would be the 68,250 minus 17,060. That gives you 51,190. Uh, okay. So basically, what we're doing is we are creating a, a PL statement here. Now, uh, we've got, you know, we've got uh, all the way down to net profit uh, after tax. Now, let's see, let's add um, let's uh, add profit and loss account. And this would be from the, uh, whatever was from the previous year. Okay. Uh, let's assume that was 7,000. That gives us a total of 51,190 plus 7,000. That gives us 58,190. All right. Now, let's assume uh, the shareholders are going to be getting uh, dividend paid to them. So let's assume that the ordinary dividend was let's see let's assume it was 11,200 okay and the preferential uh, shareholders got the um, uh, preference uh, dividend and it's those are usually uh, you know the shareholders are less than the ordinary so let's Let's assume the, the dividend paid on the, the preferential shares was uh, 1200 and um, transfer to general reserve. Now this would also be coming from last year. Let's assume that's 40,000. Okay. So, in fact, let me just indent these also. Now, let's see. I'm just going to draw a line all the way going across. So, the unappropriated uh, profit, at the, you know, at the end of the day, is going to be sum of all these three. Oops, sorry. Um, would be uh, 
Let, let's just first uh, do a sum here. 52,400. That's the, the, the total uh, that we had earned. And now you, you're transferring uh, 40,000 to the general reserves. You've paid 1,200 to the beneficial shareholders and 11,200 to ordinary shareholders. Now the profit after tax was the whole. All the profit afterwards was 78, uh, sorry, 58, 190. This is what you had to pay out or transfer to uh, the general reserve. So what you're left with is 58 minus 52,400. That gives you 57.90. All right. So that was um, year one. Okay, let me just put it here. Year one, okay. Now let's do year two. All right. Now let's assume uh, the cash sales was better than last year. It was hundred twenty thousand, and the credit sales was eight hundred ten thousand. So that gives you a total of nine thirty nine thirty thousand. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the opening stock for year two is basically the closing stock of year one. So we just you know, link it to this, uh, the closing stock of year one. That gives us 34,000. And let's assume we bought stock worth 650,000 during the year, the year two that is. So the total would be 650,000 plus 34,000 gives 684,000. Now, uh, let's assume that the closing stock was 40,000. So what we're left with now is 684,000 minus 40,000 is 644,000. All right. Now, the gross profit last year was 184,000. Let's assume uh, we did better this year. Our sales were better. So let's assume we did uh, the gross profit of 286,000. Okay. Uh, obviously, because of higher business, we had also higher costs. The ratio of the cost may may not be, may be cheaper to do business, but still. Because of the higher volume of business, the total expense are going to be higher uh, in year two as opposed to year one. So in year one, it was 115,000. In year two, because it has to be higher, let's assume it is 128,000. Okay. So the net profit before tax would be the 286,000 minus 128,000. That gives you uh, net profit before tax of 158,000. Okay, let's make it a little interesting and let's um, add, make you know, let's change this to make it just you know, this is too even a number. So let's just make it a little ex and more interesting. Okay, so we've got 157,990. Okay, uh, interest on debentures is still going to be. 750 unless you have bought you know you've done something there uh, borrowed more money uh, so the interest rate is going to be same now net profit before uh, taxation is going to be the net uh, profit before interest minus the interest that you paid 
is 157,240. Now, the corporate tax would have changed, uh, maybe because of uh, you know the government regulations, government changing the tax labs, or because of the higher uh, prices that we have done. So let's assume um, that let's make it more interesting here. Let's assume it is 39,310. Okay, that's what the uh, corporate tax was. So now the net profit after tax would be the 157,240 minus the, the corporate tax 39,310. So that gives you uh, 117,390. Okay, <clears throat> now uh, profit loss account that is this amount here what we'll do is we'll add it from year one we we'll bring it to year two okay and uh, so now let's do a sum here and add these two numbers and we get 120,720 okay now ordinary dividend uh, because you made more profit, maybe you know, you paid more more dividend. Uh, preferred is going to stay the same. Okay. Uh, let's see if you mm, let's say you transfer hundred thousand to the general reserve. So now, uh, what we'll do is. We just do a sum and let's just add these three numbers 122 200 all right that's what you know you paid the dividend you paid uh audit dividend preferred dividend and you transferred some amount to the general reserve so what you have got left is 123 720 minus whatever you used you pay the dividend, the audit dividend, the preferred dividend, and the transfer to general reserve. That should be 1,115.20. There you go. So that is your uh, PNL. Okay. So you've got the PNL statement done. Now uh, we will create the balance sheet. And once we've done the balance sheet, then we'll come back to this sheet here and calculate the different ratios. So this is the balance sheet. Okay, let me just give it a number, uh, a color. Let's color this green. Let's color this blue. All right. So uh, just to recap, we've got. Uh, you know, we've got these ratios to be, we are going to be calculating to look up the performance of uh, this company. And this is the uh, PNL uh, statement. So you've got that done. Now we, what we are doing is we are going to be creating the uh, balance sheet. Okay. So let me just copy this here because we still have the year one, year two. Okay. So we have the first category here we had was sales. In case of balance sheet, uh, we're gonna have the net fixed asset. Okay, let me make this bold. Okay, now, uh, if you remember, uh, the fixed asset. Okay. Let's see where that is going to be coming from. Uh, fixed assets are usually uh, long-term assets. Okay. So we, we we divide the fixed assets into two. We have the current assets and the long term. Current assets are usually short term, which can easily be converted into either which is either cash or which can easily be converted into cash. Okay. 
So, uh, fixed assets are uh, usually long term, and uh, it is not as easy to convert into cash as it is uh, with the, in the case of the current assets. Okay. So uh, let's assume this company has a. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, this that's good. Uh, fixed asset worth. In this, we are talking about year one. 592,000. Okay, let me just uh, change the format here. So we've got uh, commas for the thousand space. There you go. Okay. Now let's look at the current assets. I'm going to make that bold also. Okay. So within the current assets, like I said, uh, we have assets that can quickly be converted into cash or our cash so you've got stock we got letters we come back now let me just indent this a bit okay so these we can easily sell stock and uh, you know convert them into cash or debtors we can collect from the debtors and uh, you know, and get the money, and then the, uh, the money that at the bank is basically cash that you have in your bank account. Now, stock would be coming from the PL, basically, that's well, not really coming from, but it's basically the closing stock of, of the previous year. Okay, uh, let's assume we owe 51,000. Uh, so, not we do our debtors owe us. Uh, 51,000 and let's assume we have 14,000 in the bank okay so that would give us a total of let's see 34 85 95 99 maybe yeah 99,000 okay So you've got that portion done. Now let's look at the um, current liabilities. Okay. Now the current liabilities are liabilities that you have to pay quickly. You can add you tend not, you are unlikely uh, to postpone them over a long period. So within this category, we have uh, creditors. These are the people we owe. Corporate tax. The venture interest that you have to pay, and then you have the ordinary dividend uh, due, and then you have the reference dividend due. Okay. Now let's assume we to the creditors uh, we owe forty thousand. The corporate tax we know we have just encountered here. Uh, corporate tax seventeen zero sixty. Okay. Now the reason why I'm linking it over there is if I ever make a change here to this tax amount. It will automatically update my spreadsheet. So always, always use links. Okay, and also let me just indent this a bit. Okay, now debenture interest due that is seven fifty. Let's get that from the year one from the balance PNL also. Uh, ordinary dividend due. Let's you grab that from. The PNL, and then we have the preferential. Okay. So 
so this should add up to 40 50 57 67 68 about 69 70 let's see Seventy thousand uh, to ten. Okay. Now, uh, next step would be we've got the net fixed assets. We've got the the current assets. We've got the current liabilities. Now, the next step would. Be so you see, uh, the current assets is 99,000 and the current liability is uh, 70,000, uh, 210. So what is the, um, when you net them off, so it's basically going to be the total current assets minus the total current liabilities. That gives you 28,790. Okay, let me just draw a line going across. All right. And you notice how the current assets are more than the current liabilities. So that this is this gives you the the total over here for the assets. So it's going to be the fixed assets plus uh, the the balance of the current assets after uh, we have paid off our current liabilities. So that gives you six twenty. 790 okay Oof. and uh, now we have less um, long-term liabilities because we have done uh, the, the, the long-term assets the, the short-term assets we've done the, uh, the short-term liabilities and now we do the long-term liabilities okay and let's assume that's five percent of the dimensions that we have okay so let's assume that is 15,000 okay now if the, the difference between uh, what we did here was we added up the fixed assets and the current assets and we subtracted the current liabilities and we got uh, and whatever we had you know we let it off and we got 627.90 now supposing you have uh, 15,000 as a long term uh, liability so now when we add it up well, we, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the 15,000 from this because this is a liability you got 605,790 okay now <clears throat> This is all financed through shares, right? Financed, uh, financed by either it's, it's financed by share capital or um, through some other means. So let's let's see. Issued um, share capital. And let's make this bold. And we had ordinary shares and we had professional shares. Preferential shares, sorry. Ordinary shares of, let's assume, one dollar. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's make that. 140,000 and 
Let's make that a one dollar each as well, and I'm just going to indent that a bit. Okay, and that is going to be twenty thousand. Okay. Now, you know, the financing was done by issuing share capital. We issued shares, party shares of one dollar each. Total of total sales were one hundred forty thousand. Uh, preferential was total sales of twenty thousand. Okay. So we get the total here of one hundred sixty thousand. Okay. Let me. Get rid of this line here. Let's move it up. I'm just going to squeeze this down there just a tad bit. So I, I want to make sure that everything fits on the single screen. Oops, shouldn't turn on that. Hang on. There you go. Okay. And then we have reserves. Make that bold. And you have the general reserve, and you have profit and loss account. Okay, and let me just indent this. Although, like I said, we are what we're doing is we're just uh, setting the groundwork here uh, for uh, we created a, a PNL. Now we're creating a balance sheet. And once we've done that, then what we'll do is we'll do uh, the ratio analysis. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now, general reserves. Let's see. 440,000. Profit and loss account. That would be coming from the PNL. That's the 5790. Okay. So that gives you a total of 45790. Okay. Let me just draw a line going across. <clears throat> now this figure of 160 and this figure of uh, 45 445 790 uh, that should add up to this figure here and it does okay because uh, assets is equal to liabilities plus on this uh, Equity, so yeah, um, okay. So, uh, this is the owner's equity, so this should add up to least when you add these two, we should get the six fifty, the six of five seven ninety and six of five seven ninety, okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this in yellow so just to show that these two are matching up. Okay, now let's do the same thing for year two. Okay, now the, the fixed assets, let's see. Uh, Let's assume it's uh, 696,000. Okay, so now the stock, that would be the closing stock from from year two. We go to our PNL. Uh, that should be this guy here for the 40,000. Okay, 
Uh, say for example, we owe. Is that it is so? Uh, people that owe us money. Let's see, maybe eighty-five thousand is what people owe us. Okay. And uh, we have twelve. Um, let's go with this. Seven eighty in the in the bank. Okay. So we have a total of one thirty-seven. Seven eighty. Okay. Now. This is your land liability. Let's assume uh, we owe fifty thousand to the operators. Our corporate tax. We go back to our P and L. Uh, corporate tax was thirty nine three ten. Debentures again. We go to our P and L was seven fifty. Ordinary dividend was uh, twenty-one thousand. Preferred dividend, I think, was twelve hundred. Yeah. Okay. And so, if we add them up, we get one hundred seventeen to sixty. Okay. I am sorry. I need I, this. I should have put over here. All right. Now let's see if the assets are one hundred thirty-seven. This is your current liability. Let's see what the difference is. One hundred thirty-seven seven. Eighty minus one seventeen two sixty. That gives you net asset of twenty two fifty. Okay. Now you already had uh, fixed asset of six ninety six. You add another twenty five twenty. So let's add this with this. Seven hundred sixteen seven uh, five twenty is what the uh, fixed assets, current assets minus fixed asset plus current assets minus current liability. Okay. Now let's look at um, long, you know, long term liability. Uh, that's still going to be fifteen thousand. Let me draw a line here. So it's going to be seven sixteen seven thousand seven hundred sixteen thousand five twenty minus fifteen thousand. And you get seven hundred and one to uh, five twenty. Now. You have not show, uh, sold any more shares, so the you know the share capital, issue share capital for ordinary share will still be hundred forty. The pressure professional would still be twenty thousand, and the sum is sum of these two uh, values. Would be hundred and sixty thousand, same as last year. Okay. Now, the general now the general reserve last year was four hundred forty four hundred forty thousand. Okay. Oops, sorry. Four hundred forty thousand, and to that, what you do is you add whatever transfer to gen, uh, general reserve, 
which was uh, 100,000. Okay. So that gives you 540,000. Uh, the buffer and loss account, again, you go here. That was something 1,200, 1520. There you go. Okay. <coughs> now this adds up to. Five forty one, five twenty. Okay. Now, if I were to add these two, I get seven oh one seven five twenty, which is exact same figure here. So these two are matching up. There you go. Okay. So we've got. Uh, balance sheet done. So we have, excuse me, uh, to recap, we have done a uh, profit and loss and we have done a balance sheet. So if you've got those two, uh, you know, sources of information in place, now what we're going to do is we are going to be, uh, you know, we're going to start calculating the ratios. Okay. So let me add another sheet here. This would be the turn on. The turn on capital employee. Okay. Now, the formula is. Uh, let me just add this on. The formula is um, net profit after tax okay. divided by the fixed assets plus planned uh, assets. Minus the long term uh, liability. And then you multiply by a thousand, you get the percentage. Okay? So that's what your formula is. So let's plug in the value. Net profit after tax. Now, hang on, let's do one more thing here. This would be year one, and this would be year two. Okay. Now, for year one, net profit after tax. Okay. What we'll do is we'll go here, net profit after tax. That's your 51,190 divided by, okay, and put a bracket here. Now I'm looking at the, uh, the fixed assets, okay, and the, uh, the fixed assets, the, the current assets minus the long-term liabilities. For that, what I'll do is I will go to the balance sheet uh, fixed asset was 592 plus the current assets uh, was current asset minus current liabilities the net was uh, 28790 okay and then I do a minus and long term liabilities is 50 so basically what I've done is goes back it into 100. The fixed assets, current assets, this is actually current asset minus the current liabilities. Okay. 
and minus the long term, uh, term assets. So let's just, uh, in fact, fix this because that's essentially what it is. Fix assets plus current assets minus uh, current liabilities. Uh, liabilities minus long-term liabilities okay so I'm just going to get rid of this times 100 here and I'm going to change this format to uh, percentage and that will take care of the times 100 so year one uh, the return on capital uh, employed ratio was 88.45 okay now let's do the same thing for year two net profit after tax so we go to PNL net profit after tax is 117,930 okay and you divide that bracket okay and we come to the balance sheet would be the fixed assets um, plus they are different with the current assets and current liabilities minus the long-term liabilities So now uh, year one average was uh, year one uh, return on capital employed ratio was 8.45 in year two uh, 16.81. Now uh, this is the most obvious test of profitability is the profit that a business earns on capital invested in it. Okay, and uh, now. 8.45 percent this guy here year one what that means is for every hundred dollars that you invest you earn 8.45 dollars for the business in year two for every hundred dollars invested the business is making 16.81 okay so uh, this means the year two performance has improved from year one now uh, the reason for this improvement could be uh, maybe they have increased the pricing okay or they are running the business more efficiently or they are also uh, managing their assets uh, you know the way they use their assets they are using them more efficiently that is why uh, the year two uh, ratio uh, for the return on capital employed is almost twice that of year one. All right. Now <clears throat> we've got that done. Okay. Now we'll do a uh, gross profit ratio. Okay. Let me add another sheet. Let's name it gross profit ratio. Okay. Now, let me first add the formula. So the gross profit ratio is basically the gross, uh, the gross profit divided by the turnover. Okay. Now <coughs> we have year one. We have year two. Now what we'll see is how are these two ratios working out. Okay, and I will make this 
a percentage format also. All right. Now year one gross profit. Go into the PNL. Now the gross gross profit in year one was one hundred eighty four thousand. Okay. Now the total sales was seven hundred thousand. So you've got a ratio of twenty six point two nine percent. And let's see what the um, year two performance was like. Was two. Uh, hang on a second. Two eighty six gross profit was two eighty six divided by turnover was nine thirty. So now from twenty six percent, it has gone over to uh, thirty percent. So basically, what that means is uh, you are earning more money per unit of product sold. Essentially, that's what it means. Okay. Uh, for every you know hundred dollars of sales, uh, you are making a gross profit of twenty six percent, twenty six dollars in the first year, and five hundred dollars of sales in the second year. You're making thirty dollars. So, you know, you know, you your business is performing better. So you are either con uh, controlling your costs somehow, or you are you have increased your prices. Okay, now. If you were to reduce the price, then this issue would go down because obviously the reduction in price is going to reduce your uh, gross profit. Increase in price is going to make this uh, make the gross profit go up, and therefore make this uh, ratio go up. Uh, also, if uh, gross profit obviously comes from uh, you know uh, other expenses that you co the company is incurring in day to day operations so uh, if you have improved that while keeping the 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 pricing uh, the same that would also improve this ratio okay so we've got the gross profit ratio done now what we'll do is we'll look at the uh, markup uh, ratio okay i'm just going to copy it here yeah. and we'll do insert a sheet and like you always do let's first have the formula okay so that is cost profit divided by the cost of cost of sales Times one to get the oops sorry. This is to get the percentage. In fact, I should also do the same thing here. Okay. So we have year one, year two. Make this into percentage okay so this is gross profit divided by the cost of sales now in year one the gross profit was 184,000 okay and the cost of sales was if we go back we have to divide that's this guy here because you got the opening stock the purchases and this is what, what, what the less uh, closing stock is so if you've done 35.66 percent and in year two we have got the gross profit of 286 
divided by 644. So you've got 35% uh, as opposed to in year one and then got 44% in year two. Now, because the percentage again in year two has gone up, that means the cost of sales has gone down. The numerator, uh, if, if you keep the numerator the same and you reduce the size of the denominator, the, 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 the answer would be higher and that's what's happening. So we can see, uh, we can sort of uh, uh, imagine, you know, you can uh, theorize that the cost of sales uh, or cost of doing business uh, has improved in year two. So we've got the markup ratio done. Okay. Now we'll do a net ratio, net profit ratio. So we'll copy here, insert a sheet. Okay. And let me stick this all the way to the end. Okay. So the first thing that we do is uh, we write the formula. Now the net profit ratio is net profit divided by turnover into hundred. into a percentage all right so the net profit in year one let's go to a PNL net profit was uh, 51 190 divided by the and for year two, it was 117.930 divided by the 930 turnover. So you've got uh, year one was 7.31% and year two was 12.68%. Now, uh, what that means is uh, the pricing has improved, either the pricing has improved or the way the business is being run, that is uh, improved because uh, basically what's happening is uh, the ratio of the net pro uh, profit to the turnover has improved, okay? So that's what basically uh, this uh, ratio tells us that uh, if the pricing and the, if the prices remain the same, then uh, sales has improved, or um, the the cost of doing business has improved, right? So that was uh, net profit ratio. Okay. Now. <clears throat> Now we'll do the two liquidity ratios. You have the, the current ratio and the asset test. Okay. So let's do, oops, let me just first copy the name. Let's write the formula. Now, the current ratio, basically, basically the current ratio is the ratio between current uh, current assets and the liabilities. That's it. So they should be the current asset and current liabilities. Okay. So 
year one, year two, okay. Now, what is the current asset in year one? The current, oops, sorry. Current asset is ninety nine thousand. Ratio current liabilities. Seventy two ten. So if to simplify this, if I were to divide uh, 70 to 10 by 70 to 10 and 9,000 9, uh, by 70 to 10, it would be, uh, let's just do it here. one4 So this would be a 1.4 ratio one. Okay the space here just to make it easier to read okay so in year two the current uh, assets current assets in year two is 137 780 okay and the current liabilities Liability will be 117 to 60. Okay, so if if I were to 70 divided by 117 to 60, so basically it is. 1.14 ratio 1 okay. so what does that tell us now the current assets uh, of a business should be sufficient to enable the business to carry on trading if all the current liabilities have been paid off okay now the ratio of 1.4 to 1 uh, is too low okay and further fell uh, in year two now what should happen is we need to uh, take some corrective measures here because this first part is the current assets and the second part is the current liabilities okay so now what has happened is um, if you have to quickly pay off your current liability you can use your current uh, assets right now but but then you need to have uh, some some money left over too so you have here for every dollar that you owe in a current uh, liability you have a dollar forty one dollar and forty cents as a current asset so even if you liquidated all your current assets to pay off your current liability you're still left with 40 cents uh, as opposed to here you only left with 17 cents so we we need to look at why this issue has gone down and what can be done to improve that all right now <clears throat> we've got that done Okay, uh, so if you've got the current ratio done, now let's look at the uh, acid test ratio, okay? Uh, let's insert a sheet, and I'm going to 
call that acid test ratio. Okay. So let, let's first put the formula up here. That is current assets minus stock ratio current abilities. Okay. So we have year one. We have year two. And basically we're gonna be following the same pattern that we have here. Okay. So current assets is let's see what current assets is 99,000 minus stock is 34,000 so that's 65,000 and current liabilities is 70,000 to 10 so this ratio would be uh, 65 thousand ratio 70 210 all right now what we'll do is we need to make one side one so let's divide both sides by you know by um seven the uh, seven hundred two thousand uh, seven uh, seventy thousand two hundred ten so basically it's going to be um, 65,000 oops sorry 65,000 divided by 7210 and obviously the other part of the ratio is going to be 70 so 1 is equal to 1.92 uh, ratio ratio 1 and now let's look at for uh, year 2 current assets current asset minus stock is and then current liability is So basically, it's 97,780 ratio 117,260. Now, if I were to divide this by 117,260 and this were to uh, by 117,260, you would get and this obviously would be Okay, so basically what it's saying is uh, what we want is uh, the current asset minus stock should be equal to the current liability. Should be, you know, the ratio should be close to 1 to 1. To, one, to one. Now, year 1, it was 0.93, okay, which was low anyways. But year 2, it went further, back, further worse and became uh, 0.83, okay. So uh, the, the capital, the working capital situation is uh, not satisfactory. So that's what we deduce from the asset test ratio. Okay. So let's go to the issues. So we've got that taken care of. Okay. That's the end of the part one in the, this uh, two part video series. We have discussed the profitability ratios and we have discussed the liquidity ratios. Now in part two, uh, in the next video, what we will be looking at is the efficiency ratios and the uh, investment ratios. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, put them down in the comment section below. Hit the like button and subscribe and make sure you hit that uh, bell icon so you'll always get notifications when new videos are uploaded. Thank you.